a bit, I'm going to show images of a Chieri one. This is a painting with the children of King Charles I. This is Charles II, his siblings and their dogs. And the dogs are King Charles Spaniels with a short neck and low ears. And they have been bred that way because it looks cute. But these dogs are prone to developing a Chieri one. And Chieri one is more a syndrome than a malformation in contrast to Chieri 2, which is a true malformation like the rare Chieri 3 and 4. And in Chieri 1, there's a small posterior fossa, probably a bony abnormality, with low lying cerebellar tonsils, 5 mm below the foramen magnum, and the syrinx in the central cord central canal of the spinal cord, as you can see on these T1 and T2 weighted images. The 5 mm criterion below the foramen magnum is not a clear-cut criterion, because as said, Chieri 1 is more a syndrome than a malformation. And about two-thirds of the patient have a small posterior fossa with a short clivus, and there have been many studies and many measurements, as you can see here, that might be abnormal in a Chieri 1 syndrome. The position of the cerebellar tonsils is not a static one. This is an MRI of a five-year-old boy. And you can see that he is so young because of his large adenoids. And this boy had been imaged for a completely unrelated reason. And they found this low position of the cerebellar tonsils, but at a follow-up examination a few months later, the craniocervical junction looked normal. The mechanism of the syrinx in Chieri 1 has already been described in 1965 by Gardner, who came up with the hydrodynamic theory, which is the most supported. And Gardner looked at patients with syringomyelia and at the abnormalities found in the posterior fossa. And there was a congenital deformity that resembled the Chieri 2. And in many instances, there was also a membrane at the level of the foramen of Majendi. And this membrane diverted the flow from the fort ventricle into the central canal instead of the subarachnoid space, as you can see in his drawings. And as a reminder, this is a drawing from the Handbook of Clinical Neurology, where you can see Blake's pouch discussed in the previous vlog, and the inferior membranous area of wheat that Gardner referred to, that remains closed. If you look at the images of patients with a Chieri 1, you notice that in the small posterior fossa there is also no normal cisterna magna. And Chang came up with the concept that the cisterna magna acted as a shock absorber and the central canal was regarded as a temporary fluid storage of the CSF, so a wind castle like the aorta in the cardiovascular system. And if there is a decreased compliance at the craniocervical junction because of the absence of the cisterna magna, there is an increased pressure wave going into the central canal, and the higher wall pressure in the central canal leads to a decreased compliance. And if this becomes stiffer, the hydrodynamics change. And the theory from Gardner and from Chang also explain why a decompression at the craniocervical junction might release, relieve the syrinx, because you are only operating extradural and there's no intradural procedure. Um, so this is a case of a patient with a Chieri 1 and a huge syrinx and six months after decompression the diameter of the central canal has decreased but unfortunately five years postoperative 
it has increased again. So the hydrodynamics are not static again. And a low position of the cerebellar tonsils is not only seen in Chiari 1 malformations, but also in intracranial hypotension that we will discuss next time.